Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we have a very special guest today. We're talking to Kevin Kidd, Kevin's director of competition here at Roush Fenway Racing. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the unique challenges we have coming up this weekend in Pocono with the doubleheader race. Kevin, you guys got a got a little preview of this before. Uh, so what have you learned about the challenges of running two races in two days here uh, in the NASCAR Cup Series? Yeah, you know, it's a, certainly a unique challenge that um, uh, we we had not ever experienced until last year. Um, a doubleheader in a cup series, is, is, <laughs> five years ago, you would say there's no way possible. You're not going to do that. But uh, uh, we were able to figure out a way to do that. And and to add to that challenge, it, it you know it comes at Pocono, which is the unique challenging track in and of itself. Um, you know, the biggest things that we do – uh, going into that race to, to be prepared for it, um, you know, a couple different areas. We just make sure that we have the right people at the racetrack. So uh, you run the first race, you get some damage on a right front fender, or you get, uh, you know, nose that gets a hole in it for, for one reason or another. Um, you know, NASCAR is not going to necessarily let you bring out your backup car for real small damage. And to be honest, we wouldn't want to bring out the backup car uh, for small damage. Um, things that we can reasonably fix and repair from race one to race two. We're going to do that so that we don't have to start at the tail of the field on uh, race two. Uh, so we have to have the right people there, fabricators, uh, paint body guys, uh, guys that, that wouldn't necessarily go to the racetrack on a, on a normal weekend. Uh, we bring them along in this case uh, to help us uh, manage the weekend. Uh, in addition to that, you know, there's a, uh, uh, other things that could or, or, you know, could not happen if you wreck in the first race and you do pull up your backup car, um, you have to, you know, do an engine change, uh, take your engine out of the primary and put it in the backup. Um, you know, there's things like that that are uh, just unique and challenging to, to that weekend. And, um, you know, it, it can be stressful. Um, but if race one goes off without a hitch, then, uh, then it's really pretty smooth sailing. So, uh, a lot of the uh, the <clears throat> unknown and uncertainty of how that weekend will go just really stems around how race one goes for you. So I, I want to get back to what you mentioned about the roster spots and bringing different guys along to Pocono. I think that's something that fans don't see much of even on a week-to-week -week basis, that, that challenge of figuring out the right mix of people to bring with limited roster spots for each team. So that's something that I know you're thinking about every week, but but it sounds like especially so at Pocono. So what goes into that that decision of, of thinking about, you know, this is what I want to use each of these roster spots on? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it's probably not a lot different than building out a roster for a football team or a basketball team. You're you know, you have limited number of spots and uh, you're trying to anticipate um, what's going to come at you for that weekend. Um, and then you're trying to tailor the skill sets <clears throat> around uh, those anticipations to make sure that you have the, the right staff available to, to deal with any kind of problems that come their way. Uh, I think about it in terms of football. You know, if, if you have a football team that runs a particular offense, uh, uh, maybe they're a pass-oriented offense or maybe they're a run-oriented offense, uh, they're going to skew their roster one way or another uh, to best complement their style of, of play. Uh, racing, we don't really have offense and defense, but we do have uh, situations and problems and things that we have to manage and deal with on a weekend. Um, and it definitely means that uh, we have to tailor the skill sets accordingly. Absolutely. And, and with uh, so, so I have a really half-baked theory I want to run by you here. Uh, my yeah. thought has been since I've gotten into the sport that Pocono is the track that teams are least prepared for because it is so different. You do go to it two times a year, although now it's two times in the same weekend, so it almost doesn't help you out that you get a second one there. But it's such a unique track. It's so different with the turns from anywhere you go. Is it a place that is harder for teams to figure out? And now without practice, you have even less information to work off of. It can be for sure. Um, you know, at this point in the game, we've all got a really large notebook built up around Pocono for the years that we've been going there. And so we understand the place really well, but it is unique. It's not, you know, like any other place that we go to. I suppose in the past, the Indy Oval would have been kind of the next mm -hmm. closest thing. 
uh, but even it is not really like Pocono. Uh, right. The three different turns are are very unique to each other, um, and and so you it's it's one of those tracks where you really have to find a compromise. You're not going to get all ends of the track just perfect. Uh, you're looking for that compromise um, to get. Um, typically, in my past, you know the the exit of turn three. Um, and, and consequently kind of the exit of turn one are really the most important parts of the racetrack. Uh, what has happened, uh, since the rules have changed and we've gone to the 550, the, uh, what we call the 550 package, which is a low horsepower, high downforce package. Um, it's actually shifted that whole track around to where turn two is actually, uh, probably the most important part of the track because, if you have turn two correct, you can run wide open throttle through there or nearly wide open throttle. And uh, that then makes, you know, from the exit of turn one all the way to the entry of turn three, one big long straightaway. And uh, if you're compromising turn two and have to slow down for that corner, uh, you're you're not going to perform very well. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's what it is to me is that there it feels like there's no perfect setup at Pocono. There there's there's trade-offs everywhere you go. And and of course with that 550 package, there's trade-offs everywhere where you look in between drag and downforce. I know that's something you've talked a lot about being that that trade-off and trying to figure out the right balance. But but with this long track with the three different turns, it it feels like you're you're almost working in overdrive on the on the engineering trying to figure out what's going to be the best for you. Yeah, Pocono is is uh, a tough one for the drag versus downforce trade off because um, you know those corners uh, are all fairly slow corners. Not you know slow in the sense of you know like short track, but they're slow in the sense of when comparing them to say Charlotte or Atlanta, um, and and so uh, downforce matters a whole lot uh, for each of the three corners there. Uh, and you want to have as much of it as you can. But then the problem you have is these really long straightaways that reward low drag. And so you're you're trying to find the right compromise between the two because unfortunately, you know, drag and, and downforce are coupled together and, and uh, rarely can you uh, reduce drag and increase downforce uh, at, you know, independent of one another. You, you know, those things work together. And so, uh, uh, it makes it hard sometimes to uh, strike the right balance of, of what you're looking for uh, at a place like Pocono. Um, and at the end of the day, we do a lot of engineering work and, and uh, a lot of simulations and, and just a, a fair amount of energy that goes into that discussion for each of the tracks, but uh, Pocono specifically, uh, to try to find the, the right compromise and give us the right package for that track. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, sort of hard science going into this, but I think with the double header, it also brings in a little bit of soft science. We saw last year a little bit that race for 20th place in the first race where they were inverting the field. So if you finish 20th, you got the pole for the next race. You finish yep. 21st, you started 21st. That brings in a whole new element of gameplay uh, into this. Is that something that the teams are planning out ahead of time, not to not saying if you're running 18 with a couple laps to go, you, you know, maybe back it down, but, but is that something that you're sort of aware of ahead of time that, that there is that extra element uh, to prepare for the second race? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you're, you're entering the weekend with the idea that you're trying to score the maximum amount of points over a two day event. And, uh, um, I think, you know, you don't enter or, you know, at the start of the, of the race on the day one, you don't go into it thinking, okay, we're just going to uh, tank this race for hope of getting a better starting spot for race two. Uh, you, you definitely don't play it that way. But if race one doesn't quite go your way and you find yourself kind of hovering around 20th or, you know, say you're 16th or 17th, um, you know, it, certainly you're going to consider all options to figure out uh, okay, do I uh, want a row two spot for day one or day two, or, or do I run a row one spot? And um, and those things will enter your mind, and uh, you'll you'll game theory it a little bit and try to decide um, you know what the right move is. Uh, again, with the goal of scoring the maximum amount of points for for the whole weekend. So when you talk about it like that, it, it, it almost feels like the team is thinking about this like just one really long race. You know, mm -hmm. it's 
between the two events, it's 675 miles, so longer even than the Coke 600, which we just saw. But so you almost think about it like that, like uh, how there are four stages in that. It's just an extended halftime in between, in between the two sets. Certainly, there are certain elements of it that make you think about it as one long race. Um, in terms of scoring points over the weekend, um, you definitely think about it that way. Um, what I can say is they, they do give out two trophies that weekend and they do give out two, uh, of those big giant checks that have a a dollar sign on it, uh, to the winner. And so, um, you know, you're, you are still considering race wins and, and to be frank, um, a race win in either of those events puts you in the playoffs automatically. And so, um, you have to keep that in mind as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, we're all looking forward to this doubleheader at Pocono, one of the most unique events and in, in what's a pretty unique season for you guys and figuring out a lot of new tracks, a lot of new events. Um, so this should be a fun one. Thanks so much for your time today. No problem, Jackson. Thanks you.